Pennebeck, Norland Red, Hedden, Yukon Gold. Idea is to like to transplant these. Obviously, originally it was going to do container potatoes. I decided to build a potato tower, or a potato wall, or a potato spiral, or uh, a bunch of potato cylinders. I got to get these potatoes in the ground, so therefore the next project has uh, is uh, screaming at me to get done. I'm gonna go with the potato wall. And the basic idea here is see this corner. People come. You could go down all the way down, but they're gonna very often walk across, drive their little motor scooters across, drive their electric Barbie mobiles across, you know, and uh, gonna whack my nectarine tree. And we'd like to uh, eventually put down pavers and even install a bench, put a trash can, a recycling can. That might be a bit much. I had wild cucumber growing here for, for a couple of years. It popped up one year and uh, I just loved it. It was so prolific and uh, viney that I actually did use it to uh, uh, address the uh, chain link fence uh, for a couple of years and it was awesome. This wall of green and remnants of the uh, tree. City's tree. You see these two big boughs right there. A couple big boughs up there that have no buds, no no twigs or branches coming off. They, they're dead and stuff like this falls from the sky. Uh, so I put it there so that all those Hot Wheels have a guide. But a better guide would be a potato tower or wall. I'm going to redo this fence closer to this line here. So let's say I want to start it about here. Well in, three feet in from the sidewalk. And uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine paces is like 27 feet, 30 feet. Okay, let's do, let's, uh, let's see what the numbers have to say. All right, so what did I say? So about 27 feet, 30, uh, but let's, let's call it 25 feet. I have four containers. There's 12 to 15 plants. Let's say that I'll recover from each. So let's, let's say about 50 plants, an enclosure, three feet high, 30 inches wide. Maybe we'll bump that up to 36 and we'll see how it goes. I'm going to divide it down the middle with a, something special, a little experiment, maybe only half of it, but we'll see. We'll get to that when I get, when we, when we get, get going here. So about 25 plants per side. This includes the top which would be split three levels including the top so about nine plants per level per side so if that, that were the top and it were divided that'd be something looking something like that we're going to uh, be inserting into the side uh, and so we're gonna end up with maybe something like that it's only nine on two levels the side and that's not quite right yeah we'll figure it out so yeah papers one thing but uh, let's 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 uh, let's dig here. Let's let's do some digging. Okay, Sunday, April thirtieth. Typically, when I'm working outside and in the garden and in, uh, whatever, uh, whenever I can, I uh, I go barefoot because you want to maintain that that connection to the earth because it's more important than gravity. Maybe is gravity electrical uh, negative charge of the earth. The reason I mentioned it is because I am, well, I'm currently barefoot. I'm going to break out the rototiller, for which I should put shoes on for safety, just so in case of slippage and whatnot. Let's break out the rototiller and uh, let's get this, this project started. Yeah, I forgot to mention, uh, well, uh, might run into some uh, roots from this uh, tree here, in which case we're just going to lightly go over them and then we'll work around them. I just uh, uh, need to mention that, that by the grace of God, I picked up this rototiller for free uh, on Craigslist uh, many years ago and, uh, uh, and, and fixed it up and it's, a, and it's a wonderful good machine. Thank you God. Let's hope it starts on the first try. Probably won't, but let's hope it starts.
died and I broke my starter rope. So we're gonna have to tend to that. Okay, four bolts to get the uh, blower housing, the recoil starter assembly off of this bad boy. All right, so actually didn't break, just uh, came untied. So yeah. So what we want to do is hold on to the end. Got to spin it backward to give us that recoil action. We got to find the end again now. Hey, maybe that's it right there. We can tease that out of there. Gonna need a little tool. Just a second. Got a little uh, pick. And I picked it out of there, and yeah, it uh, didn't break. It uh, became untied. So I'm gonna try and tease it down through the hole here. I'm trying to do this without having to take off the, uh, the wheel, because that spraying boy becomes unsprung. It's tedious to get it back together. This is tedious as well, but I managed to make it ratty so that it won't go through the hole. Let's just try the direct persuasion. So the thing is, now I got it wound up, I gotta hold on to it. One more tool. Oh. So there's ours. I think this is cotton rope, and so I don't think this trick is really gonna do much, but you got one with nylon rope. This trick works great, which is give it a little uh, burn on the end. It helps uh, keep it from, uh, oh yeah. Phew. Some plastic in there, that's for sure. A little burn to keep it sealed up on the end and see if we can't tease that thing through. Ooh, got it started. Boy, oh boy. Fix got a grab to it. Huh? Progress? No, because this pick oh, sticks. Because the tip has a little a little barb on the tip. Dang it. Let me know what we do with that. Now that tip is very much more pick-like. So let's try this one more time. So we should be able to just push and pull it out without pulling the rope back out. There we go, see that? Tease that right on through. Success. Oh. Ah. Only problem is I've got the thing wound up way too much. So that's what, three or four turns. We're gonna have to back this off. One, two, and we get to start all over again. Maybe go three. There we go. All right. Uh, now we got our recoil action. Let's take our pin out. Pop the pin out of there. Boink. Through the hole. This rope is so greasy, that's why it slipped out. Well, I'm sure the knot was not so great. All right. Maybe we'll be back in business here shortly. Ow. Oh boy. All right, got that one started now too. Maybe I'm getting good at this. Oh, look at that. Right on in the hole. Tight as I can get it with finger tight. Okay. Oh, get that under the... Nope. Ah, boy. There we go. Sort of. Oh, come on. Hang it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh boy. Okie dokie. Oh, kiddly diddly. This. This. All right. Now, hopefully, by the grace of God, we'll be back in business here in a few minutes. I'm going to go put these tools away. And uh, perhaps the reason, uh, the reason that happened there is so that I could show you all how easy it can be to... Uh, to uh, fix a uh, broken uh, recoil uh, starter rope. Folks, don't sell your machine off uh, because the recoil broke for, you know, or junk it and go out and buy a new one. Take the, take the things apart and, and look, what, look, look how it, it's not rocket science. It's not brain surgery um, to, uh, to learn how to the, these machines can be uh, maintained and repaired really easily so rather than forging out a new uh, machine out of China let's take care of these uh, these old cast iron machines are are made to to uh, to to last a very long time and have a very long useful life including one one or two 
uh, rebuilds. And uh, and we're just we're just we're firing up the forges and, and pumping these things out. And uh, nobody can uh, afford to make and, and sell a, a quality machine quality machine anymore uh, that's built to last because nobody will buy it. Because nobody knows, you know, not nobody, but very few people bother to, to learn how to maintain them. Uh, the places that sell new machines, they just want to sell new machines. They don't care. Uh, working on these is more difficult than unpacking a crate from China or wherever. So, but these, this kind of quality, cast iron, uh, you know, uh, they just you just don't make them anymore. You can't. Nobody can afford to make them anymore because nobody will buy them. So, so we are actually training, uh, training our, our our world and our realm to uh, to produce junk, and uh, that's that's what that's what all this stuff is. Uh, all that stuff you buy nowadays is junk. Anyway, let me put the tools away and uh, let's see if we can get this thing started again. All right, I guess I'm going to have to uh, learn something about tying knots. All right, I was going to make another pass, but, uh, but I got uh, good and deep along there. So uh, let me uh, put away the rototiller and um, we will uh, dig that out, dig out the loose dirt. <laughs> Working, working. Yeah. yeah. You know tempo. You know tempo all that? Yeah. But a lot of people cover the park in the uh, street. Uh. So may I park here? To what? Can may I park here? May I park here? Oh, of course. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank, you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got tempo over here. <laughs> all right. So I was going to do try to do six even 12 inches deep and I'll fill that with a soil mix but, and then it'd be kind of freestanding. Sun is more the problem here but these potatoes will be fine so it'll be more more on the surface we'll make sure it's supported. Let me uh, dig out this trough here. Proper digging shovel. I gotta get a new one or a new handle. I got a tool. Oh, oh right. Nice uh, Nice worm castings down here, it, uh, so it's looking good. Those roots I'm pulling up, not tree roots, but they're coming from the, this invasive vine over here, which is uh, very uh, persistent. 